Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be covering grunge and dirt mapping. And by that I mean like the scratches and wear and tear and accumulated dirt like I did for this robot here. Let's jump straight into this. So I have his arm set up here, but we're going to go ahead and zoom in on a section so you guys can really see what's going on. So I'm going to choose this section here. Cool. Now to start off with, you guys are going to need some assets to work with. So go ahead and open Google and you're going to be searching for grunge maps or dirt maps or scratch maps and you'll find images like these so go ahead and find some that you like the look of and we're going to be using them as masking layers to add some dirt to this robot cool let's go ahead and create a redshift material and apply this, this material to my arm and jump straight into our nodes so if you think about how say a material is applied to a car you have like the underneath layer this metallic layer and on top of that you have your paint layer and then top of that you have any dirt that's accumulated so we first of all want to come and create all three of those materials let's go ahead and rename this one let's name this paint and i'm going to make this like a bright let's say bright blue and this layer is usually quite shiny because this is our paint layer I'll change the diffuse Cool, so this is our paint layer. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And next we're going to create a metallic layer. So this is our metal layer like underneath. Let's make this like a grey. And I'm going to make this say a bit shinier, 0.125. And then next let's go ahead and create a dirt layer. And for our dirt layer I'm actually going to go ahead and grab a material so I'm going to grab this dirt material and I'm going to apply this both to our diffuse color and our reflection color. And we can go ahead and see how this is mapping. So this is mapping quite badly because it's elongating it on one side. So we're going to go to our projection and change this to cubic and that should fix this. And it's a little big. So let's go ahead and change our scale. So the higher the scale, the more it's projecting onto it. So let's increase this to like three and three, and it's going to make it a lot smaller. Cool. So this is our dirt layer, and the rough roughness on our dirt layer is going to be quite rough. So let's make this like 0.8. Cool. So we have our three layers. Let's go ahead and name them. So this is our metallic, and this is our dirt. Cool. So let's drag these out the way for now and grab a material blender and put this blender into our output so the first material we want to grab is our paint layer and this can come down and sit as our base color second of all our metallic layer and this is going to sit as our layer color one so now we need to tell it where to apply this metallic layer so let's add some scratches to say the edge of this uh, cube that we have here uh, so how do I only select the edge of this cube? Now the great way of doing this is using a curvature. So let's grab a curvature and a ramp. And we're going to be using a lot of ramps, you'll see. So if I put this curvature into my ramp and then my ramp to my output, by default it's on convex. So convex is the outside angles and concave is the inside angles. So for now, we're just going to use convex and I'm going to increase our radius to say three. And the samples on this, the lower the samples, the blurry it's going to be. And that's often quite what we want. So let's think about this. Say if I increase these samples to like 200, you can see now we get like some really black lines around the bottom of this. So I'm going to blur this out. So say I'm going to reduce my samples to like five. It's a bit low let's go back to 15 and it's just going to blur it out a bit so if i go ahead and apply this to my blends color one put this to my output you'll see it's now applied this metallic color we can even increase uh, the brightness of this metallic color by pulling our white up on our ramp so it's really prominent so this makes it look like it's had some wear and tear on the edge of it but it's very uniform and scratches aren't uniform so let's go ahead and add some scratches to where this curvature is applying. So to do this, we're going to grab a color composite. Go ahead and put our curvature into our base color. 
And for now, let's just put this to our output. So we have these lines on the edge. And I'm going to copy this ramp. And just reset it. So we're going to use it in a second. And I'm going to come and find a scratch map. So let's use this grunge map that I have here. Let's pull this in and apply this to my ramp. And let's have a look at how this is mapping. So we're going to pull our blacks down because it's only going to be applying the scratches in the white areas. So let's pull our whites up and our blacks down, really clamp this out. And maybe this is a little big. So let's just increase our scale to two and two. Cool. And pull our blacks out of here. Cool, looking good. So if I come and put this into my color composite as my blend color and then put this to my output, you'll see we still only have this outline. But what we can do is under our composite mode, you may remember some of these from like if you use show Photoshop before. So for example, if I say add, it's going to add the two together. But if I say multiply, it's only going to apply this scratching to where the curvature is applied. So now we can really see where what our scratches are going to look like on the edge of this. So maybe our texture is not quite right. I'm actually going to make it bigger. Mm, does that look good? See, the issue right now is we're having uh, some mapping problems. Say so it's being cut off here. And this is a seamless image. But because of how it's mapping on like cylinders and stuff, because we've made it cubic, it's not quite correct. So to fix this, we're going to grab a tri planner. Let's grab our tri planner and we're going to go ahead and put this into our tri planner under image X, image Y, and image Z. So all three of them. And this is basically telling it to apply from every angle. Put this back into our output. Perfect. See, now you can see it's a mapping properly onto this. So I'm going to get it and increase our scale again. Bring it back down to one. Cool, so I like the look of this. So let's go ahead and put this into my material blender now. So now you see we have like all these scratches around the edge of this. Looks a lot less uniform. Awesome, looking good. Still not quite as bright as I'd want it to be, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab another ramp. Put my color composite into my ramp and then put this into my material blender and then just crank the white down on my black on my ramp sorry this makes it a lot brighter cool looking good now what if i want scratches over the whole of this object not just the edges well we can go ahead and add to this uh, color composite basically keep layering up uh, textures on top of each other so the simple way to do this is i'm going to deconnect our ramp grab all of this so this is our original color composite I'm going to move this left and I'm going to go ahead and grab another color composite so I'm going to grab this one control drag to make another one and we're going to put our old one into our base color which means now we can add one more texture to this so let's go ahead and grab a scratch map I have a map here this is what this one looks like and I'm going to grab a ramp for this put this into our ramp and have a look how this one is now being applied so this one doesn't have such problems uh, with the mapping so let's go ahead and just clamp our blacks down because it's only going to be applied in the white areas remember pull our whites up cool and now we can add this to our new color composite and instead of multiply we can tell this one to add so it's adding the two together put this into our ramp that we had earlier and put this back into our output and now we have these scratches all over our object now. So this doesn't look quite right. At the moment, it looks like it has paint on top. Uh, we need to add some bump mapping to this because if you think about how paint peels off, there's this obvious like dip inwards as the paint does have some thickness to it. So we need a bump map on this. So let's go ahead and create a bump map. Apply this bump map to our paint layer. Overall bump input. And then grab this ramp and put it into our bump map. So now you can see, to make it like this uh, 
scratches like dip inwards like the paint has been like peeled off of this awesome this is actually looking really cool so let's move on to some dirt mapping let's just clean our nodes up quickly so this is one map here this is another map here cool so we have a dirt map and we're going to go ahead and put this dirt map into our layer color too so where would we want this dirt map so dirt accumulates on the like tighter angles like little crevices and stuff so we want to maybe see where my mouse is we want to apply some dirt mapping around like the bottom of this little like knob here and maybe just across like the general uh plane of this object so let's go ahead and grab another curvature and of course another ramp cool put the curvature into our ramp and put the ramp into our output and this time instead of convex we want concave curves we want to target these inside angles and we're going to go ahead and increase our radius on this to like three get some real dirt around the bottom of this now you can see we have this like black line uh, in the middle of this and this is where the two objects meet and this is what i was talking about earlier with the sample so if i increase my samples to like 200 you see this black line starts to like even out is because it's uh like tightened up uh, just how the pixels are being projected so if i reduce our samples to like say five it really does blur out this line and removes it cool so we're going to go ahead and grab a color composite again and just with the scratch mapping we're going to put our color composite into our base color and I'm going to pull my whites up again. Remember, I forgot to do this. And now we need a scratch map or a stipple map that we like the look of for our dirt. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one here because it has some like uh, bumps to it. So let's apply this. Grab a ramp, put this into our ramp. And now I have a look at how this is projecting. So this also has some issues, but it's not as bad. I think we can, we can work with this without try planning it. So first of all, it's too big. So I'm going to increase our scale to five and five. Yeah, it looks a lot better. And again, it's only going to be applying in the white areas. So let's go ahead and clamp our black down and then pull our whites up. And that's looking pretty good. Maybe we want to move this map slightly because it's going to be applying around the bottom of this. Maybe we want all the bumps around the bottom so we can start to offset this. So that we get purposeful like mapping around the bottom of this awesome looking good put this into our color composite and tell it to multiply this time put this to our output so we can have a look at it yep it's looking good i do want it to be a bit brighter though so again grab a ramp i'm going to go ahead and copy this one put this into our ramp And just make sure the whites are pulled up to make this as bright as possible. Cool. So now if I put this into my material blender as my blends color too. And you can see we have a bit of dirt map around the bottom of this now. It's not particularly prominent. Let's go ahead and isolate this area. You can see it's not particularly prominent. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull my white up even more and make this a bit brighter. See, so we have some dirt mapping. So now we're just again going to add some dirt mapping to the overall uh, plane of this object. So exactly the same as I did before. Move this back. Disconnect our ramp. Grab another color composite. Put this color composite into our base. And I'm actually going to go ahead and copy this material I had here, put this into our blends color. Actually, let's go ahead and put this into our output. So this one doesn't need to be as prominent because we're going to be using it for the whole object. So let's maybe pull the blacks down a bit more. Maybe make this one a bit bigger. And I'm just going to rotate it by 180 so it's not the exact same. And that's looking pretty good. 
So we're putting this back into our ramp. So if you say you can't see a material, um, I'm, what I like to do is go into overall and turn my emissions up quickly. So I'm going to make this like a bright green. And you can see it's not applying correctly here. So the issue was the color composite I I'd obviously uh, copied from earlier is set to multiply. So let's go ahead and change this to add. And there's our green. So let's go ahead and turn off our emissions because we know it's there now. So now we have, see, some dirt mapping all over this. So the dirt mapping also needs some bump mapping. So let's go ahead and create a bump. Put this into my material. And put this ramp into this. Input. And you'll instantly see the issue with this bump mapping is it's using the same the way the uh, scratches are used, which is actually it's caving it inwards, whereas dirt would be sat on top of this and would actually be bumping outwards. So let's go ahead and grab a ramp. Put this ramp into our bump map and put this old ramp that we had here into this ramp. And we're not going to change any of the whites and blacks on this. We're simply just going to invert. So now this dirt mapping is actually bumping upwards uh, on this object. Cool. So this is dirt mapping. Let's go ahead and zoom out and have a look at this. Frame all. So now we have this robot arm with a lot of scratches and some dirt building up on this. And really it's just about adding all these materials on top of each other um, using these color composites and all these ramps. And so your, your nose can get pretty crazy. Anyway, hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.